we're going to be looking at setting up your homing cycle now on these things. So I set up a custom firmware here that only homes on the x-axis. So yours will probably home x and y or x, y, and z, right? Chances are it'll do z first, right? It'll pull z up out of the way of everything and then do your x and y homing together. And the laser, you don't have a z-axis. So you have to use custom homing, which is just X and Y. That way it's not waiting for a Z to do nothing. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to get this to work, okay? In my end stop pins on the side here, where it says end stops, there's a row of white pins and there's a row of black pins. The white pins is a signal. Every single one of these black pins are a ground pin, okay? To activate the homing, all you have to do is ground out this this uh, white pin to the black pin when it's looking for home, okay? So, first of all, we have to activate this in firmware, okay? So, I'm going to go to my, my gerbil over here, my laser gerbil, or whatever program you're using with the console. Make sure you're connected. I know I'm connected because it gave me this note, right? Now I'm going to type in money, money. All right, to look at the registers. Okay, register 22 says that it equals zero. Okay, zero means false or no. Okay, so if I want to turn on homing cycle, I want homing cycle to equal true or yes. So what I'm going to have to do here is type in money sign 22 equals one or yes. All right, so now homing cycle is enabled, right? So... You notice that the homing cycle popped up. One of the new features here is it pops up immediately as it's, you know, set. Okay, so I'll give you an example here. So this is the X and Y, or sorry, the X end stop here, signal and ground, right? The white signal, the, the black side over here is ground, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to home, and then I'm just going to touch these pins together. Okay, once they're touched together, it'll realize that it's at the end stop. What it's gonna do is it's gonna go find the end stop, right? The motor will try to find the end stop at a high speed, right? Touch it, come off a little bit, and then gently touch it, okay? So there's there's three things here, right? The, the initial speed where it finds it first, the amount it pulls off once it finds it, and then the speed it gently touches it again, okay? So, Let's take a look at that. I'm going to hit home now. Hit the homing cycle. And you can see, right, it's rotating, looking for home. And then as I touch these together, right, that'll simulate it finding home. So here I go, touching it. And it pulled off just a little bit. And then I touch it again. And then it pulled off that little bit again. So now it thinks it's home. Now it thinks it's right next to that end stop, right? So I'll show that to you again here. So hit home. It's going at pretty high speed, right? I'm going to touch it. Watch as it pulls off, okay? Pulls off. Now it comes back to gently touch it again, and I touch it, and it pulls off. Okay? Very important. So that's all we're doing here is making a connection between the white pin and the black pin on this board, okay? I'll give you another example. So I'm going to pull this out. This is an actual end stop here, okay? I mounted it to a piece of acrylic, but this is a... The common pin, I guess I'll find a better pointer here. Here we go. So the blue is in the common pin, right? The green is in normally open, and then I don't have normally closed on anything. So when I click this, it connects the green and blue together inside this little switch. That's all it's doing is connecting those pins together when the switch hits. So that means as your belt or as your gantry, as your whatever is moving over, right? As it's moving over, it touches it, pulls off, and then gently touches it, okay? So I'm going to plug this in, and we're going to try this out, okay? So one pin into X, X minus and X plus are the exact same thing on this shield, okay? So now I'm going to click this when I hit homing, okay? So here I go, hit homing, right, looking for home, click it, pulls off a little, then gently touches it, and then I click. 
All right. So that's the basic idea, right? Is I can have like something optical, something magnetic, something mechanical like this to actually detect that it's hit the end of its of its motion here. Now we're going to look inside and actually take a look at these settings, okay? So I'm going to type in money, money, look at the registers, and we're going to look at some of these. We're going to look at uh, 22, which we already looked at, right? We turned it on. Homing cycle is now enabled. Uh, homing direction invert. If your homing isn't in the upper right, you might need to invert your direction, okay? So add one to this. If it's opposite on the left or opposite on the x-axis, add two to that if it's opposite on the y. So if you're coming, so let's say your machine's here, your end stops are in the lower left, that's opposite x, opposite y, so that you'd make your direction three. If you're up here, that means you're just opposite x, so your direction is one then. That way, instead of going this way to your end stop, it goes this way to find your end stop. Okay, keep that in mind there, <laughs> right? That's your direction. Typically, end stops are in the upper right up here. So when it goes, it goes up and oh, hits the Y, but keeps going. And then it hits the X, comes off, and then gently touches it again. Okay, that's how they typically go. If you got your end stops in another place, you're going to have to set your invert. Anyways, so that's 23. 24, that's our gentle touch speed, okay? So as I hit home... It did a fast one, pulled off, and then gently touched at a certain speed. That that 24 is that gentle touch speed. I'll leave that at 25. That's fine. 25, that's your uh, that's your fast speed. That's a find the end stops. You know, go up, find the end stops, and touch them. Okay? So that's that speed. The initial go find them speed, and then it comes off, and then gently touches them. Okay. Next one is how far it actually pulls off, right? So this little switch might activate, right? This little switch might activate, like right here. Like once you push it in far enough, it activates. But you're going to have to pull off a certain amount for it to deactivate. That's where the pull-off amount occurs. One millimeter is usually pretty good. I usually set mine to two just in case there's springiness somewhere or something's not working right. So what I'm going to do here is on my pull-off distance, that's 27. I'm going to sign 27 equals 2. So register 27 equals 2 millimeters. Now if I reload the settings, I'm going to sign 27 equals 2. Perfect. Okay. So let's also up the uh, the search feed rate. I usually keep mine around 3,000 or so. So money sign 25 equals 3,000. Okay. So it's going to spin a lot faster until I touch this. It's going to pull off two millimeters, and then it's going to gently touch it. So let's let's give this a try here. I'm going to hit home, right? So that's spinning a lot faster, right? And then I'm going to touch the end stop, and then it pulled off a little bit more, and now it's slowly trying to touch it again, and I click it, and it pulls off that same amount. Okay, so that's how to set up your homing cycle. But what I also have here is a gantry. All set up to try to run here. Okay, so let's uh, let's zoom out a little. Okay, and we're gonna test this thing out. All right. So I'm gonna plug this in here. Well, I guess I'll unplug my x-axis first. I'm gonna slide the end stop on. Okay. Gonna tighten this up. I don't know, I'll just place it here. Doesn't really matter where. <laughs> I'm not tuning this thing today. I'm just showing you how the end stop works. Give you an idea. There we go. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Now we've got to make sure this thing's rotating the right way. Oh, I guess I better plug the stepper motor in. Okay. There we go. All right. So now verify that it's going the right way, right? I'm going to hit to the right. Oh, not 200, though. I'm going to go like 10. Yep, going the right way. 
Okay. Maybe we'll go 50 here. Yep. Moves very smooth. Okay. Now I'm going to verify that it'll actually click the end stop if I hit this. Don't want to pull wires out. There we go. <laughs> okay. If I go over here, it will click it. Okay. And that is very loose. So I'm going to tighten that up a little bit more. Uh, that's fine. Okay. So tilt it. That way it doesn't rub on the ground here. Okay. So end stops here. It's got this little paddle right here to hit the end stop. Okay. I'm going to move it to the side. Okay. And now I'm going to hit the homing cycle. And we're going to see it go over here, touch it, pull off just a little bit, and then gently touch it again. And then this axis will be homed. All right. Moving over. Touches it, pulls off just a little bit, and then really slowly touches it. And there we go. So you do that on all your axes, right? You do that on your X and Y if that's all you have. You do that on your Z axis. You make sure at the end of the movement here, it has something to hit. Something like optical, something you know, magnetic, something mechanical for it to actually hit. Now I could actually take, you know, these two bare wires right I can put one bare wire on here right pointing at the thing and one bare wire over here and as soon as they you know touch it'll think that it hits the end stop so it doesn't have to be fancy like it just has to be able to somewhat find that area and then like if you mess up your engraving you mess up your cutting you can always find that zero again mechanical end switches are known to be the most accurate and most dependable type I know the opticals are cool, and the magnetic ones are cool, and they're lower maintenance, right? Especially if you got like a lot of wood chips or something or dust, you don't have to clear it out. But the mechanical ones are, for some reason, thought of as the most dependable type. So I guess I'll do this one more time, and then I'll end the video here. So I'll explain uh, what I set up here. So I turned 22 on, right? Homing cycle enable. I made sure my homing direction was correct, so I'm going to the right, so that means this is zero, okay? My initial speed, my 25 is 3,000. It's going to go from wherever it starts at 3,000 millimeters a minute until it touches this thing, right? And then my pull-off here is 2 millimeters. It's going to come 2 millimeters off. And then at 25 millimeters a minute, very slow, it's going to gently touch it and then pull off again, and then it's homed. Okay, so one more time here. And that's how you set up your homing. Uh, thanks for watching.